hey, it's Sabrina. So, my dream finally came true. It's a Christmas miracle. I have green mermaid hair, like I've always wanted. I've been talking about coloring my hair blue or green for a while now, at least six months, maybe longer. And I really didn't think it would happen until 2017. But I got my hair done last Friday and the girl that was doing my hair was like, your hair's light enough, we bleach it enough now that it could take the green and it would look awesome with your dark hair and your dark roots. So I was like, girl, let's do it. It's not that much more expensive, let's just do it. So I'm really happy with the result, although every time I wash my hair, it now looks like, you know, I'm peeing green, but it's all worth it in the end. However, today's video is gonna be me sharing with you my top six books of 2016. Basically my favorite books that I've read throughout the year. This year was a really bad reading year. I think I read less than 30 books, which is not a good reading year for me. I usually try to do 50 or 60, so basically double the amount of what I read this year. But this year has been really hard for me in my personal life. And when I am really like down, I don't read a lot. So basically I'm gonna be sharing with you my top six favorite books of 2016. So let's just go ahead and get started. Coming in at number six is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I really loved this book. I didn't, I haven't seen the movie yet, but the book was just, it was so like different and weird, but Patrick Ness is such a great writer that I just found myself enjoying it so much. Although I wasn't exactly happy by the end, about the ending, and I don't feel like it was anything like mind blowing, just like the ride there and the story and the detail was just amazing that I ended up really loving this book. And I think I, I gave it 4.5 out of five stars, so. Definitely in my top books. I loved it. I would highly recommend it to anybody. Coming in at number five is Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, which is the first book in the Percy Jackson series. I have yet to continue reading the series. I read the first one like a few months back and I haven't continued with the series since. I do plan on doing that but um, I really enjoyed The Lightning Thief. I saw the movie a long time ago. I haven't seen it re recently so I feel like Okay, I didn't really, I couldn't really compare them because I've honestly forgotten a lot of what happens in the movie, but I really love the book. It's definitely very, very obvious that this is a middle grade book. So if you're someone who doesn't really like that level of writing, then I wouldn't recommend it, but I think it's enjoyable for people of many ages. I really enjoyed it, even though for the most part, I try to stay away from middle grade because I find that the juvenile and immaturity of it kind of made, like ruins it for me. But in this book, it didn't. I really loved it and I would recommend it. And I gave it four out of five stars. Coming in at number four is The Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson, right? Erica Johansson. This is the second book in the Queen of the Tearling trilogy. Uh, the third book actually is already out and I'm gonna be reading it hopefully soon in the next few months. But Invasion of the Tearling, well, I felt so torn about it for a long time because when I first picked it up, um, it was a little bit slow and so I actually put it down for a long time but when I re-picked back up and read and kept reading it I fell in love with it so much that I loved it even more than the first book which is just the Queen of the Tearling. So Invasion of the Tearling is so great. I'm excited to see what Erica does in the third and final book because I just I love this and it's such a great fantasy that is like I don't know, I really loved it and I gave it five out of five stars. Coming in at number three is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I read this back in the summer and I had no expectations going into it. It's basically about two boys that become best friends and they live in El Paso, Texas, I wanna say, which is cool for me to relate to because I've been to El Paso, I'm from Texas. And um, it's just about like their friendship and how they grow together and kind of discovering their love for each other, the love that's more than just friendship. And it was definitely my first book that I read that had any sort of homosexuality, references in it like most of the book it doesn't even talk about that but at the end you're just like whoa and I really liked it um although I was a little bit I wasn't surprised at all about what was happening I think the way it was done and the way it was written was really great so I would highly recommend it if you're looking for something if you're just barely trying to like start into the LGBT community if you're barely if you're really new to it and you want something that's very light-hearted well I don't know if it's necessarily lighthearted. If you like something that's an easy read, I would recommend it. 
Coming in at number two is The Giver by Lois Lowry. Now, I read this when I was really young. I think I was in junior high or elementary school and I loved it a lot. And then I recently, I saw the movie like three or four years ago when it came out and I loved the movie so much that I decided to read the book again. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Now The Giver I think is a quartet and I read three of them this year, but by the third one, I was just kind of over it. I feel like The Giver was the best one and it could have been a standalone and it was so good. If you don't know what it's about, I mean, I'm not gonna talk about it because it's like everyone knows what it's about, but I gave it five out of five stars because I loved it so much. I mean, coming in at number one is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabosky. Chabosky? I don't know how to say his last name. But um, Perks of Being a Wallflower was one is one of my favorite movies of all time and it also is one of my favorite books of all time. I just think that the book is so great because professionally in my per in my professional life I deal with mental health problems on a daily basis so I felt like this was something that I could really relate to and I also deal with some of those things that, that Charlie deals with and it's just such like a good but sad and moving story. I feel like the book is straight to the point. It's not very long, but it but it really gets you in your heart. And the movie was done so beautifully and so well. I loved it. So that is my number one pick that I read for this year. But that is it. I will talk to you very, very soon. And my next video will be um, my reading goals for 2017. So that is it. I'll talk to you very soon. And of course, thanks for watching had a kind of sort of similar characteristics to Slytherin, but had more of a positive connotation. So people would want to be in this house and not necessarily think like, oh, that's the house, the bad house where all the bad witches and wizards come from. So 